Coming up on this week's Gadget Show Web TV, John's checking out the latest Edifier speakers, Otis looks at the Gorilla Cam app, and I bring you this week's best tech news. Hello and welcome to this week's Web TV. Coming up later, Otis checks out a great camera app for the iPhone. But first, John's looking at Edifier's latest portable speakers. Designed for listeners always on the go, but who don't want to scrimp on sound quality. But can they really live up to some of the high quality speaker systems from the likes of Bose and BMW? <laughs> One should never judge a product on looks alone, but in the case of Edifier's new external transportable speaker system, the Aurora, with its neat styling and range of rainbow colours, I was tempted to break that important rule. After all, in a world of ugly external speakers and cheap and nasty iPod docks, it's a refreshing change, especially at the asking price of around 50 quid. It's so a development of the company's earlier black-only MP300+, Plus, and it shares the old model's excellent sound quality. In spite of just having a 2-inch subwoofer in here and only 1.5-inch size speakers in the pair of tweeters, it nevertheless manages to be a pleasure to listen to. Now, obviously, as with all of these systems, you're dependent on the tweeters to give you the sense of space, the subwoofers just providing a sort of unified bass support. But in spite of that, it actually manages to produce a reasonably coherent sound stage, at least when you're listening up fairly close. Obviously, with all these systems, you should take the quoted sound outputs with a pinch of salt. They say 15 watts for the subwoofer and 3.5 watts per channel through the tweeters. I don't think it sounds anything like as loud as those figures suggest. But nevertheless, it can produce enough sound to listen to in an average-sized room. It's certainly good enough for listening up close with your laptop. I wouldn't recommend it necessarily though for competing with uh, loud items of domestic equipment or for parties. The cabling is pretty neat. There's uh, one input for the mains adapter there, another for the speaker cable which is combined left and right, and the input plugs in via a 3.5mm socket there, which means you can put anything into it, more or less. I've got an iPhone here, you could use an iPod, or you could use any sort of MP3 player. I've actually been using it quite a bit with a dab radio. Obviously, there are some drawbacks. If you're an iPod user, you might miss having a dedicated iPod dock. You can't charge your iPod through this, but it does mean you can connect anything to it. Um, also, I think it's a great pity there's no travelling case. It would be great to be able to uh, easily fit this into a dedicated carrier when you're off to your important conference or just travelling about. You could throw it into your suitcase more easily. However, in spite of all that, I think it's uh, excellent sounding, excellent value for money external speaker system, and I can wholeheartedly recommend it. news time now and first up Microsoft has officially launched Windows Phone 7. The software giant is hoping that its completely revamped mobile phone platform can compete with the software from Android and Apple. Microsoft CEO Steve Ballmer has announced that there will be nine handsets available during launch including the HTC HD7, the HTC7 Trophy, LG's Optimus 7, Samsung's Omnia 7 and the HTC7 Mozart. Also all of the UK's major networks have got their hands on exclusive deals with some of these handsets which represent a huge push by Microsoft to compete with its rivals. So here's hoping they succeed within the phone market to make it a much more competitive place. And you can be sure that we will give you a full review as soon as we get our hands on a handset. Right, next up, and sticking to the mobile theme, Skype has just announced it's added an Android application to its mobile platform. Users with an Android phone running 2.1 or above can download the application via Google's app market now. Skype to Skype calling is obviously included, allowing free calls in the UK via Wi-Fi and 3G. I am chat with multiple friends and the ability to update your profile from your handset. However, as with the iPhone and Symbian Skype apps, it's not all great news as it can use up a lot of your data allowance. So if you plan on using it heavily, make sure you're on one of those unlimited data tariffs. 
And finally, Sony have announced that their partnership with Love Film has been extended to the PS3, allowing gamers to access the movie subscription service. Sony currently offers Love Film via its internet-enabled TV range, so adding it to the PS3 is a natural progression to get it to the widest audience possible. Love Film is available via the PS3's XMB, and if you're not already a member, you can easily sign up to enjoy a full range of movies that can be streamed directly to your console, and you can order the DVDs you want right from your sofa. If you sign up to the $5.99 a month package, you can access the service as soon as it goes live. It's been some time now since we saw the lovely Otis Dealey on web TV, and that's because the main show has consumed all of his time over the past few months. Luckily though, we were able to grab him on a studio day so he could share with you one of his latest and favourite apps. Cameras on smartphones and mobile phones are actually now quite good. Um, and even though the makers of the iPhone have improved their camera on the iPhone 4, it's still not as good as some of its competitors. Um, but where they're able to catch up on uh, some of the market leaders is through the release of apps. I want to take you through uh, Gorilla Cam, which has been released by the makers of Gorilla Pod. And what it does is it improves a pretty standard camera that you get on the iPhone 4. Among its many features is a bubble spirit level there, so your pictures are always taken at the right level, and touchscreen zoom, so you can go in nice and tight or pull out simply by touching and dragging your finger across the screen. And you can also turn the entire screen into a shutter, so just take your photos by tapping the screen there. About to take a photo, brilliant. Also, uh, some other features that it's got, um, time lapse, which is really cool, um, anti-shake as well, because you know how nervous you get sometimes when you're taking pictures of really cool people and your hands are shaking like that. Then the picture turns out blurred and you can't really ask famous people if you can take it again because they get really annoyed. Two things I like about the Gorilla Cam app. Uh, the first one being it turns a pretty standard camera on the iPhone 4 into something a little bit special. The other thing is it's free. That's all we've got time for today, but as ever, I'll be back at the same time next week with more news and reviews. In the meantime, why don't you check out our exclusive interviews with the developers from the upcoming Assassin's Creed Brotherhood for a sneaky peek at the game. And don't forget to catch the main show this Monday night at 8 on 5 because this week it's the Gadget Show's Budget Special, where the team go to extraordinary lengths to find the best tech at the lowest prices. It's definitely one not to miss. But from me here at Web TV, it's bye for now.